A long time ago, I made a couple of videos demonstrating what would happen if you transmit on a GMRS or HAMS radios without an antenna. In one of those videos, I used a 5-watt handheld radio. The other video, a 50-watt mobile radio. And I transmitted on both of the radios for several minutes whilst no antenna was attached. And contrary to what all of the experts have been telling us for years, nothing happened. Neither radio was damaged in any way, and both radios worked just fine. I will put links to both of those videos in the more information section of this video below so you can see for yourself. My thinking when I made those videos was that I could put an end to the rumors and the lies that all of the experts and some people have been telling us for years. Those lies being that if you accidentally touch the push to talk trigger, Without an antenna attached to the radio, it would be instantly and irreversibly damaged. But now that I have proved that not to be the case, at least with cheap Chinese radios, those experts and some people have shifted their narrative and are now telling us that it's not the transmitting without an antenna that will hurt your radio. Nay, now they are telling us that it is transmitting with an antenna that has a high SWR that will damage your radio. So let's do an experiment and find out once and for all if some people are just full of shit. As you can see with your very own ocular sauce packs on my workbench before me, I have a five watt Bufwang UV5R radio and it is connected to a Nagoya UT72G antenna via my Farzometer 2000 SWR and power meter. The antenna has a little bit of a ground plane, and as you can see, when I transmit, this antenna is fairly well-tuned for the frequency of 462.575, my gigahertz, with an SWR of near perfection, and the radio is outputting 4.5 watts. So to commence with this experiment, which, by the way, I did not have to take a test or buy a permission slip to do, I am going to remove the ground plane, and next, I am going to customize the antenna by very carefully and very precisely adjusting it with these bolt cutters. By the way, I carry these highly precise bolt cutters in my very manly Jeep because they help me go places I can't usually get to. And after making these very precise adjustments, I can't seem to get the SWR to go any higher than about three and a half. I did not plan on this, but as an enterprising young radio expert, we're gonna get a high SWR on this thing one way or another. So after destroying that perfectly good Nagoya antenna for nothing, remember, I do this so that you don't have to, we're gonna go with plan B. We'll try this Nagoya knockoff antenna instead. After making this minor adjustment, the antenna now has an SWR of just over 6 to 1, which most experts would agree is dangerously high and will damage my radio if I put my finger anywhere near the trigger. So let's see what happens when I transmit with this dangerously high SWR. But first, remember, according to the experts and the guardians of the airwaves, most of whom go out of their way to brag about being licensed ham radio operators for decades, because apparently they have nothing else in their life to be proud about. According to them, if I transmit on this radio with an SWR any higher than about three to one, it will immediately and irreversibly damage the radio. So let's see what happens when I transmit with this dangerously high SWR. But first, Allow me to be very, very clear and hopefully prevent all of the stupid comments from some people that are no doubt already warming up their fingers 
to write their 10-page opus in the comments on what a horrible person I am for making a video like this. So to be clear, I am not suggesting or advocating that you do this. I do not do this with all of my radios. You should not do this with your radios. And I am in no way inferring, implying, suggesting, or insinuating that transmitting with a high SWR is good for your radio, nor am I claiming that any SWR higher than around 3 to 1 is acceptable for your radios. However, what I am doing is pointing out that most of the time, usually on average, in most cases, those online experts, even the ones that always brag about being a licensed ham radios expert for years, are socially decelerated idiots and should be ignored with extreme prejudice. So let's see what happens when I transmit on this radio with this very dangerously high SWR. But first, I will be using a timer so as to get an accurate measure of the elapsed temporal interval. I'm going to use this very highly precise trigger device to hold the pull to talk trigger. So as you can see, the radio is now transmitting. The Farzometer 2000 is showing an SWR of five and a half, and the power output is 3.6 watts. Coming up on one minute, so far the radio has not exploded. It is not on fire. No black holes have formed. Coming up on two minutes, we're still outputting just under four watts. SWR is still dangerously high. The radio is still not in flames nor smoking, although it is getting warmer. Coming up now on five minutes, the radio is still transmitting. The SWR is still dangerously high. The radio is still outputting just under four watts. The radio is getting warm with a temperature on the plastic case of about 111 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the seven minute mark, radio is still transmitting. SWR is still dangerously high. Power output is still just under four watts. And the temperature is right around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It is quite warm. And at the eight minute mark, Radio is still transmitting. Power output is still just under 4 watts. Dangerously high SWR remains. And the temperature has cooled down by a few degrees. So as you can see, after transmitting for over 5 minutes with a dangerously high SWR, the radio did not explode. The radio did not catch on fire. The radio did not even stop functioning, although it did warm up a bit. But for all intensive purposes, this radio looks just fine. Fine. And we can see that the power output is still nominal when measured into this dummy load. Even after all of that abuse and trauma, something that some people assured us would destroy this radio. Although it does appear that the LCD may be suffering some damage, probably due to the heat. It's not as bright and cheery as it used to be, and there's a dark band across the bottom. Let's bring in another radio to see how this radio sounds, just to make sure the internal circuitry isn't scrambled, as some people assured us would happen. Testies, 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 one, two, three. And as you can hear with your own noise holes, the radio still transmits and sounds just fine. But more importantly, and the real lesson for us all here today is that some people the people that spread this kind of rumors, lies, and misinformation to try and gatekeep their little hobby or to show everyone how smart they think they are. In reality, those people are just socially broken idiots that should be ignored with extreme prejudice. <laughs>